a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video 1 and introduction. Video 7b, measurement of clearance and relationship to half-life. A quick recap from video 7a. We know that the principal organs of drug elimination are the liver and kidneys. We can measure renal clearance from urine. We can measure total clearance from plasma. Incidentally, total clearance is usually referred to as just clearance, unless the addition of total as a subscript is required to avoid ambiguity. So if you just see clearance by itself, then you know it's referring to the total clearance. Now, hepatic clearance is a little different because you can't measure that directly, but you have to calculate it indirectly. Why? It's explained by the fact that you have a concentration of drug in blood entering an organ, liver in this case, and a concentration of drug exiting the liver. You have an extraction ratio, which for the liver is known as the hepatic extraction ratio, and hence EH. And the extraction ratio is given by this equation, and the hepatic clearance is given by this equation. We covered all this in video 7a. But we can now conclude that in order to calculate the hepatic clearance, you need to know the drug concentration in the blood going into the liver and out of the liver. And those are inaccessible blood vessels. You can't make those measurements. So you can't measure hepatic clearance directly. But as I said, you can measure it indirectly. And we'll come to that in just a minute. First, we're going to have a look at total clearance measured in plasma. The elimination rate constant K was introduced in video 3A. The elimination rate constant can be expressed as the rate of elimination divided by the amount of drug in plasma. The rate of elimination is given by clearance and the amount of drug in plasma is given by its volume of distribution. That's in video 6. So therefore clearance equals the volume of distribution multiplied by the elimination rate constant. Just a quick word here on units. Volume of distribution has units of volume, typically litres, and the elimination rate constant has volumes of per time, typically per hour. And so therefore, this confirms that our clearance has units of litres per hour. So, clearance equals the volume of distribution multiplied by the elimination rate constant. If you take this equation from video 6 and do a little bit of substitution, you can say that clearance equals the intravenous dose divided by the corresponding area under the curve. And this is the standard equation for calculating total clearance in plasma. Let's do the calculation for pretend alone. From video 4, we know that a 2 milligram intravenous dose of pretendolone 
gave us an AUC of 91 nanograms per mil times hours. So if we pop that into the equation, we see that the clearance of pretendolone is 22 litres per hour. How does that compare with some common drugs? Let's put this into context. Here is a table of a number of drugs. I'm not going to go through them one by one. I will point out that you can have fairly low clearance, such as diazepam, 1.6 litres per hour, or you can have really very high clearance, exemplified here by butorphanol at 168 litres per hour. Now let's turn our attention to renal clearance. The kidneys filter blood and extract the drug into urine. So how is renal clearance measured? Well, the drug is administered, preferably intravenously, to some individual. That administration will generate some plasma area under the curve, AUC, as described in video four. You collect urine until all the drug is completely excreted. So that is typically over five plasma half-lives. You then determine the total mass of unchanged parent drug excreted in the urine. That is known as AE for amount excreted. Renal clearance is then calculated by taking the amount excreted and divide that by the corresponding area under the curve. That is the standard equation for calculating renal clearance. Let's just take an example. Let's just say that for pretend alone, 0.4 milligrams were excreted in urine following the 2 milligram intravenous dose. And so if we pop these into the equation, we find that we have a renal clearance of 4.4 litres per hour. Now we can calculate hepatic clearance. We're going to assume that clearance is either hepatic or renal. The sum of, a, of hepatic and renal clearance gives you the total clearance in plasma. And therefore, you can say that the hepatic clearance is the total clearance minus the renal clearance. And this comes out at 176 litres per hour. So we can now divide up clearance between the liver, the kidneys, and of course, the total. And it tells us that pretendolone is predominantly hepatically cleared. We could assume probably by metabolism. In actual fact, the majority of drugs are hepatically cleared. The drugs where a significant portion of the dose ends up in the urine, they are relatively rare, but there are a number of quite important drugs that are renally cleared. For example, the penicillins. If you look at penicillin G, for example, the renal clearance is around 36 litres per hour and the hepatic clearance is around 7 litres an hour. So we know that penicillin G is cleared about five times more through kidneys than it is through the liver. Let's now turn our attention to the relationship between half-life, volume of distribution and clearance. From earlier in this video, we know that the elimination rate constant is the clearance divided by the volume of distribution. From video 3b, we know that the half-life equals the natural log of 2 divided by the elimination rate constant. And therefore, we can do a little bit of substitution. And then we can say that the half-life 
equals the natural log of 2 times the volume of distribution divided by clearance. And that is actually quite an important equation. Let me explain why by using some examples. We'll take two examples, ibuprofen and buspirone. The clearance for ibuprofen is relatively low. It's 3.2 litres per hour. And the volume of distribution is also relatively small at 10.5 litres. If we use that equation for half-life, we end up with a half-life of 2.3 hours. If we do the same calculation for buspirone, then the clearance is actually quite high. It's 122 litres per hour, and the volume of distribution is also reasonably high at 370 litres. If we put those values into our half-life equation, we come up with virtually the same half-life as for ibuprofen. So when you look at half-life for a drug, bear in mind that the drivers behind that half-life are clearance and volume of distribution. And you can have very different values for clearance and volume of distribution for drugs that have essentially the same half-life. In the next video, that's 7C, we're going to look at what's known as Rowland's equation. And we'll see what that tells us about how certain physiological factors influence clearance. Hope to see you there.